Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Every now and again, you read a book that makes the world look different. After you read it, you just don't see things in quite the same way again. And that's super, super special. It's one of the most important things about reading to us. Mm. So today we're going to look back at some of those really special books for us, the ones mm. that have changed how we see the world and the ones that looking back we can't imagine ever not having had in our lives. But the difference is that we're not going to do the classic books that usually fall into that category. So you're not going to find A Man's Search for Meaning, The Handmaid's Tale, Thinking Fast and Slow. Those are all really good books and they really have shaped the way that we think, but they're also on every possible <laughs> Google list, like books that will shape how you think about the world. So we want to do ones that are a little bit off the beaten track that you can't as readily find available on the internet. Number one is Utopia for Realists. So Utopia for Realists made us think differently about the good that social policy can do mm -hmm. and the impact that governments have on people around the world. It also really made us think differently about evidence-based policy and actually the lack of evidence that goes into a lot of policy and the damage that that can do. Mm, scary. This book outlines why progressive social policy can have such a large impact using evidence to back everything up. Take the example of universal basic income. It talks through what are the impacts of universal basic income and actually, according to studies that have been done that have simulated this or that mm. have done this in small areas, what are the actual impacts? And a lot of people have a lot of emotional baggage associated with ideas like UBI. Mm. But this kind of cuts through the bullshit about it and really looks at what actually happens when you implement those things. It takes it away from emotion and like the political agenda and towards common good and evidence. It's really made us think about kind of the strings that government pulls when it comes to social policy and actually how much of an impact that has mm. on people's day-to-day -day lives. It made me kind of challenge some of my own assumptions about people's basic motivations. 100%. And the assumptions we make about how people react to a lot of things and what humanity really looks like. Mm -mm. That's been really important as well. It kind of takes you out of your own little bubble. So, wonderful book. Number two, we have Invisible Women. And we actually have a 2.5 bonus content, bit of bonus content <laughs> which is weapons of math destruction. Yeah, they're in similar veins. So these made us think differently about how data shapes all of our lives all day, every day. We both work in tech, we work with a lot of data, um, and it's easy to kind of abstract that away and forget about the really tangible impacts that that can have on people's lives. The attitude that we have and that people in the tech space generally have is that data-driven systems are generally helpful um, mm. and sort of impartial and just there to get the job done more efficiently in yep. ways that humans can't. These books made us think a little bit more realistically about the impacts of data and the fact that it does impact all of our lives. Um, and that impact is particularly felt by disadvantaged groups. So for example, women and people of colour. So these books sort of touch on the two main ways that bias can enter big data systems. The first is to do with the data that goes into the system, which is what Invisible Women focuses on, and how we systematically fail to collect data on women. So for example, all of the medical data that we have, a lot of um, research trials are only run on men, a lot of pharmaceutical trials are only run on men, and so the system has that blind spot. Despite the fact that we know that a lot of drugs, for example, affect men and women very differently. Very differently. All the testing is still done on men a mm. lot of the time. Mm. Exactly. And then Weapons of Math Destruction focuses less on the data going in and more on how that data is then used to create the algorithms that govern so much of our lives and how bias can be encoded into the way the algorithms are making decisions and how they're spitting out the predictions that they make. So those two books put together give you this really holistic, informed opinion on how data can be weaponized and used to perpetuate disadvantage. What would you say that this has done for the way that we think about this whole issue? I think it's just changed how we think about data in our work lives, mm -hmm. but also given us an ability and a motivation to really question where data might have come from mm -hmm. and how where it might have come from might have impacts that are unforeseen. Yeah, totally. And made us like question our own participation in the data economy. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, number three is The School of Life. Oh, I love this book. <laughs> and this is one of my favourite topics. This has made us think really differently about what we feel and how we can give a voice to those feelings mm. and where some of those feelings might have come from. It's a real emotional education, as the subtitle of the book goes. Mm. We 
like as a species, feel a lot. It's a really big part of our lives, but we often don't have the vocabulary to put to those feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's really difficult because you can't interact with them, you can't engage with them properly if you don't have a label to put on them. Mm. This book was such a wonderful way of giving us that vocabulary and really kind of making a lot of the things that we feel manageable mm. and giving us the words to describe them. And that means that we can have discussions about them, you can have conversations about them, you can look at what you're feeling and question what that feeling makes you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And he makes a lot of things that are implicit in how we mm. feel very explicit and mm. you read passages of it and you're like oh my god i get that i feel like that and he's made it so obvious it's also given me an ability to talk to you about how i feel and for us to have mm. that as kind of an explicit thing between us which mm. is lovely i can't imagine not having read this book now to mm. be honest i feel like it massively increases your level of self-awareness yeah that's yeah. a really good way of putting it i agree all right number four we have the tyranny of marriage but it's there. So I read this book this year and it really made me think differently about a lot of the narratives that we have in Western capitalist society about success and he really questions the narrative that traditionally successful people deserve their success and mm. that their success solely comes from deservedness through things like hard work and perseverance and all of these things. He talks a lot about the role of luck in having various talents that are valued by a capitalistic society. And he also talks a lot about the history of where those narratives have come from, how they originated in certain sects of Christianity. Mm. So it's made me think very differently about social structures and how we organize society and how we think about traditional notions of success. Okay, number five is Finite and Infinite Games your fave <laughs> i've always thought that people myself included do things for really weird reasons i mean it's that old thing of play stupid games win stupid prizes and i feel like we play a lot of stupid games a lot of the time <laughs> and this book really gave me a vocabulary to speak about that mm -hmm. and an articulation of, of what that looks like this entire book is packed with insight he takes this idea of a game and really extrapolates how different games play themselves out in our lives mm -hmm. and the impact that that has. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you read that, you see these games everywhere and those stupid games we talked about before suddenly become way clearer and you, you have a way of talking about them. He talks about two types of games. One is a finite game, which is played to be ended. So chess is a finite game, mm -hmm. you play to a conclusion. The other is an infinite game, which is played explicitly not to be ended, for the joy of playing the game itself. And he shows how these two types of games are all through our lives, but they're very, very different. And there's a lot of things that we play as finite games that really we should be playing as infinite games. Mm. And that makes a massive difference to how we see the world. Mm. And as soon as you start seeing things as infinite games, they're not zero sum anymore and they're joyful and there's possibility to them. And this is why I love this. This is why I'm so passionate about this book because I've never read something that inspired such a sense of joy and positivity in mm. life. Wonderful. So those are our five books, but we actually have one bonus one. Number six <laughs> is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. What, what? Yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a pretty- Fucking hilarious. Fucking hilarious and also a pretty classic yeah. sci-fi epic. This is a bit of a wild card, but it's on here because it is so absurd and yeah. it makes you realize that life is actually a little bit ridiculous yeah. and that's okay. Mm. I am going to make a very bold claim, but I would go so far as to say that it is a modern existentialist text <laughs> because it just real Nerd. it just makes you realize that life is simultaneously entirely meaningless and also really meaningful if yeah. you make it so and the characters and the story makes makes you think about that and it pushes your thinking way outside of the bounds of what's in front of you every day because the things that he talks about are so out there mm. and it's just ridiculous and fun and great okay so those are our five six books seven. five six seven books that made us see the world a little bit differently if you do end up reading any of these let us know because we'd love to like talk about them i really can't imagine not having read these books now they've mm. made such an impact on the very fundamental ways in which i look at everything around me and it's the same for you right yeah totally awesome cool well thanks for joining us we'll see you soon see you in the next one bye bye